Are you looking for some quick, easy, and super affordable Cricut DIYs? Well, you have come to the right place. Today, I am taking you with me to Dollar Tree. I am covering all of my favorite blanks, favorite products, some of my best hacks, as well as giving you a ton of free cut files so you can get crafting. This is Whiskey and What. My name is Whitney and a huge thank you to Hungry Root for sponsoring today's video. Also a huge thank you to my Whiskey Craft Buddies who come back each week to DIY with me. If you're not already a craft buddy, no worries. Just hit subscribe down below and you won't miss any future content. Now let's get into the first project. Up first, we're gonna use one of these new houses that Dollar Tree just released for spring. And if you are new to Cricut, be sure to head down to the description and check out my new to Cricut playlist. I've got materials guides, design space guides, and videos to break it down for you if you are new to Cricut to give you some more support so you can get crafting. So for this project, you are gonna need the Wi-Fi SVG that I'm providing free over on my blog and cut that to three and a half inches wide for this particular house. I'm using Oracle 651 permanent matte white vinyl and I am going to weed it out. Now I ended up using the iron on setting and this is one of my best tips if you've got small little letters that you don't want going everywhere. You can use either the iron on or the washi sheet setting to help cut these smaller bits of text and still allow you to put them on smaller signs like this that you're gonna find at the Dollar Tree. Now once everything is weeded out, I am using my paper transfer tape just because I had it on hand from Expressions Vinyl, but you can use whatever transfer tape you like. I typically don't use the Cricut transfer tape on Dollar Tree stuff unless it's glass just so I don't rip up anything, but if you do have it, you can go ahead and put it onto the table, stick it down a couple times just so then that way it's not so sticky. Now, all you need to do to customize this to your house is just type out in design space your network and password, and then nobody is going to be bugging you for the Wi-Fi details. I had one of these for our old house and I have not updated one yet, so I'm excited to use this and display it in our house. I love to suggest Dollar Tree blanks, especially to beginners, because it's a great cost-effective way to get started. You're not sinking a ton of money into different supplies, and you can experiment and also make mistakes, because that will happen, but then you are able to learn and then move on to more expensive things, so you're not frustrated right off the bat. Now throughout the video, I also want to share with you some of my favorite hacks pertaining to Cricut from Dollar Tree, and the first being are these rubber bands. I like to grab rubber bands to put them around my vinyl rolls, so then that way they all stay together intact and don't unroll everywhere on me when I'm storing them. Super quick and easy, and you get a huge pack for $1.25. Now, if your blade is getting a little dull, head over and grab a container of aluminum foil, and then you're going to want to pop out your blade from whatever machine you have. Push out the blade and make sure there aren't any pieces of vinyl stuck to the blade, and then wad up some aluminum foil, push your blade out, and poke it into the foil. That's going to act kind of like a knife sharpening blade, and then all you need to do is pop it back in your machine, and you're good to go. Next project is gonna be using these wood arrows and you guys know I love these. I'm starting by staining it in Early American because I don't have one that is stained and I thought this was the time to do it. So I'm using the Flower Market SVG and I'm cutting this out to 11 inches wide on Orcal 651 permanent matte white vinyl. This is my favorite matte white and matte black. You'll see me use it all the time. I think it gives me a higher end look and it makes items look like something I would get at boutique. Then I'm using my favorite Expressions Vinyl Transfer Tape. I'm going to sound like a broken record, but I use it all video long because it is just my favorite. And they also have other great transfer tapes at Expressions Vinyl. I will link down below as well. Once it's applied, you are good to go if you're having it just display in your house. No need to seal it because it's permanent vinyl. And I've got both a Rose Apothecary as well as just a fresh flower market because you guys know me. I like to sneak pop culture into my decor. Now, did you know you could easily use some Dollar Tree inexpensive ribbon and your Cricut to spruce it up and make it perfect for gift giving, especially because gift giving season is coming in hot. All you need to do is take some heat transfer vinyl. I'm using some Caesar Easy Weed here. And for these sizes of Dollar Tree ribbon, the traditional kind, I like to have my words be two inches tall. They fit really well in there. If you're doing two lines of text, the two lines of text need to be under the two inches or under mark. Once everything is weeded, I'm just using my little Cricut Easy Press Mini on the medium setting for 15 seconds on top of each section and then peeling it off. And this applies to a variety of Dollar Tree ribbons. So I'm doing their burlap here. I've also done some of this velvet. They've got pretty stuff out now for Valentine's Day, but I've seen it for Christmas as well as Halloween. 
and once it is pressed down you peel that carrier sheet off now you can obviously do a much longer piece to put it around a present wrap it around a bottle of wine or whatever you are gifting but it adds just a little bit of pizzazz and it's really easy to throw together with your Cricut now we're going to head back over into the crafter square section and grab ourselves some of these little trays. Now you can sometimes find some with heart holes and handle holes, whichever works. And we're going to stain both of them with early American stain. Make sure you get the inside all the way around, coat everything just so it looks nice when it's finished. Then we're going to grab the first one and turn it into just a quick and easy little sign with the UR worthy SVG that is cut to four inches wide. Now these are weeding really easy for me because I'm cutting on the iron-on setting and using that paper transfer tape to just apply it right to the sign. Now as you're seeing, there's a couple little pieces that are just kind of popping up. I just use my fingers to make sure it's all pressed down, added a little bit of jute twine, and this is a perfect sign that's going to go on my desk in my craft room. Just a little mental health reminder, a little self-care if you will. This time of year is hard for a lot of people just because it's dark and it's after Christmas, etc. So just wanted to send this vibe out to you today. Now tray number two, we are going to make it into a fun little photo display. So I started by using some super glue gel from Dollar Tree and some little clothes pins to add it to the top of the box area. And then I'm going to show you a fun trick when you are weeding something so, so, so tiny. So I cut the photo as a ticket SVG to six inches wide and it was just kind of not very tall. So I took out all the innards of letters, O's, A's, etc. I put this painter's tape over the top because it was the right thickness and I'm using it to reverse weed. So you're gonna put it right over the top. You don't have to worry about taking off that outer piece and then you just peel it back. Then we're gonna use our weeding tool to get any of the little pieces that we didn't weed in the first place, just like you are weeding some heat transfer vinyl. Then we're gonna go through and peel it back carefully. And this painter's tape did not wanna let go easily, but once I got it going, it cooperated a little bit more for me. But I was able to transfer this with a lot less headache than I would have normally. And then I added two more clips as well as some of these small little photos I printed out with my Canon selfie photo printer that I talked about around Christmas time. And I also love that they look like little ticket stubs that goes perfect with this saying, I love this so much. One of my goals this year is to spend more time on things that bring me joy. And that includes cooking more meals at home and also eating healthier because it helps me feel better. But it takes a ton of time that I really don't have. So to help with that, I recently discovered Hungry Root and I am loving it. Hungry Root is a tech-enabled grocery service that is tailored to your lifestyle and your taste and everything is delivered right to your door. They're all about personalization, so you start with a quick quiz so they can learn how you like to eat, your dietary needs, and your goals. Hungry Root then gave me a personalized pre-filled cart and I could either roll with that or make as many edits as I wanted before shipping. I swapped out a couple of meal options to suit our entire family because weeknight dinners are a struggle for us and having the meal planning done is huge. When my order arrived, it took my empty fridge to fully stocked in just minutes without having to leave my house and I love that on top of the ready to make recipes I can combine hungry root items with what we already have to help us cut down on food waste. Our first meal was Alfredo chicken sausage pasta which was done in about 15 minutes by following the included instructions. We typically have Alfredo pasta quite often but I'd never think to put chicken sausage in it so this pushed us out of our comfort zone and helped us discover something new. After each delivery you can share your thoughts so your hungry root orders will be more tailored to you each time. I love these banana bread oats for an easy breakfast, so I told them to keep them coming. If this sounds good to you, act fast because the first 100 people to use my code WIT40 will get 40% off your first grocery order with Hungry Root. Use the link in the description section or go to HungryRoot.com and use the code WIT40 for 40% off. Now let's get back into the DIYs. For this next one, we are grabbing some Dollar Tree foam board. You can either opt for the white or the black. I decided to do the black one so it looked like a chalkboard in the background, but it's personal preference. I decided to measure and cut out a square instead of having it be a rectangle shape. So I ended up cutting the long side down to 20 inches. So it was a 20 inch by 20 inch square. Once that was done, I needed to create a wood border. So I took a one by two piece of scrap from my garage, but you can get this pretty cheap at Home Depot and my miter box because it's freezing in Illinois and I don't want to go outside to use my saw. And I cut two pieces, the 20 inches for either side. 
Then I took the rest of my wood and measured how long I needed a piece to go between the two 20 inches and cut those as well and created a nice frame for myself. Then I gave it a quick sand and took it outside to stain it with early American just to give it that nice rustic look. Once that was all dry, I brought them inside and I laid out all the pieces where I wanted them to go so I knew how big to create my decal. So right here is about 16 inches and that felt good to me. I had a little bit of buffer around the outside. Then as my decal was cutting, I attached the frame to the foam board with a staple gun. I found this is the easiest way to do it and you can get a cheap like $10 staple gun. You don't need this DeWalt one. I just had it from a reupholstery project. You want to make sure it is fully attached. I do the two sides first and then the two middle pieces. And then it's time to cut out our decal. So you're going to want to upload this file that I created for you. It's as the years pass in the SVG pack and I decided to do it 16 inches wide. This is on permanent matte white vinyl. So once it's sized to the 16 inches, I'm creating a 23 and a half by 11 and a half rectangle and that is going to essentially show me how big I can cut it on that mat. So I'm gonna line it up and get it kind of where I want it and I can fit everything but those bottom two lines as I'm moving it around. When I get it where I want it, I'm going to duplicate my image just so then that way I have it to get the second piece because we're gonna have to cut it in two pieces to get it that big. And I'm lining it up, selecting both the rectangle as well as my wording and hitting slice. What that's going to do is going to cut it up for me so I can cut it in more manageable pieces. And the only issue I ran into then is that I had some of these little tops of the line before because that's how it's designed. So I just went through under contour, which is down in the right, and deselected them. And then I repeated the same process for the bottom to create the two pieces. I cut this again on that iron-on setting just to help with weeding and this was so nice. I love this vinyl because I am able to cut it like that and then weed it in one big piece like this. Other vinyls would give me a headache if I tried to do this. Then I thought this would be a good time to test out this little vinyl weeding scrap collector I found at Dollar Tree in the craft section. And this thing is nice. The mouth of it is wider than what I've seen on ones you can get on Amazon. Those are usually like between seven and $10. And I think this one will be easier to empty. So I do like it. I think it's worth the buy for the $1.25. Then I went ahead and just removed a little bit of that backer sheet from my bottom piece just so I could line it up and there wasn't going to be any overlap on my words. I'm using my paper transfer tape again that we've been using all video so I don't rip up any of that poster board. And then once it's all pushed down, I'm getting it centered in my sign and using a little bit of masking tape to do the hinge method. So I'm taping it on to both my decal transfer tape as well as the side of my sign so it will stay in place when I'm peeling back this bottom sheet. I'm putting it down, making sure there aren't any bubbles, and then I'm going to do the same towards the top. I start in the center and work my way out to either side, and I employed my larger Cricut scraper just to help me cover a little bit more ground. Once everything's pushed down, I'm carefully pulling back at an angle to reveal this really pretty saying. I absolutely love it. I'm trying to be more present this year and just realizing that there's magic in the everyday. And so I thought this would be great to fill the spaces that are emptied. Now I made signs like this for both fall, Halloween, and Christmas. So once I took those down, I have a hole downstairs. So I wanted to make this to fit into that space. Do you have Cricut mats that look like this with hair? Maybe it's your hair, maybe it's dog hair like mine, or it's just not sticky at all. Well, grab some Dawn dish soap at Dollar Tree. Put a little bit of water and a little bit of Dawn on your mat. Rub it in with your fingers and then use a scraper to get off all the hair and fuzzies and bits that stuck to it. Make sure you get it fully rinsed off. Then lay it to the side, let it fully dry, and it will be sticky and good as new. Another thing I like to grab at Dollar Tree is their parchment paper to help with weeding. So I cut out this design in Cricut Design Space in three different colors, just scrap that I had to illustrate to you guys how easy this is. I'm using permanent vinyl scraps and once everything is weeded out, I am going to apply some transfer tape to the piece I want to layer on top. 
So in this case, it is the lighter green number three. I'm applying enough transfer tape that it is hanging over the side so that it's big enough to go over the top of this three outline. And then I'm cutting some parchment paper just as big as the three as well. Now this is gonna act as a barrier between the sticky transfer tape and the bottom vinyl so I can get it lined up where I want it and then stick the transfer tape down. Then I can hinge it back, pull out the parchment paper and apply it down. I love to have some of these Dollar Tree craft paper bags on hand because you can apply vinyl to them really easily. I love the brown color as well as pink and blue to have on hand. They tend to go with a lot of different things. So I'm just taking that layered piece and adding it to the bag. And then for the three little spikes on the back in the yellow, I decided to do that by hand. Sometimes it's easier to just layer some things manually, but you could start with the yellow and do the parchment trick that way as well. I also decided to add happy birthday Finn to the bottom because we were doing a dinosaur theme for his birthday and I thought that could be fun for little treats for kids to take home or I could make a big bag for his birthday. I also love this version of congrats you nailed it. This would be awesome for a fellow coworker or a friend you're just celebrating because something great happened in their life. This is also a file I will have linked over on my blog. You can also do characters, and you guys are probably sick of me showing Bluey by now, unless your kids love it too, but this is just a great example. I like to go to Google and search for Bluey coloring pages and find ones that have thick outlines. Then I just drag them to my desktop, import them into Cricut Design Space, and then you can use their tools to cut out the background. So first up in the left, I'm selecting the crop tool so I can get rid of that outside line and the words at the bottom. Then I'm going to go back to the magic eraser here at the bottom, the little magic wand. And as I click, I can remove any of the areas that I don't want. Once it's ready to go, you can apply and add it as a cut image, and then you can cut it out and apply it right to the bag, just like we did the number three. These are great projects for scraps, and this would also be awesome for a bluey themed party as favor bags. Now normally I don't get super excited over Dollar Tree signs, but I was so excited when I saw this one because I needed a sign for my craft room. I'm working on it right now. I'm hoping to have a reveal out for you guys soon. And I created this handmade all day file that I sized to 14 inches wide. Now it was a slight beast to weed in the sense that it just took a little time. It wasn't hard, but you did need to take your time. But once it came out, it looked so, so good. So this is 14 inches wide. We're doing the paper transfer tape just because I wasn't sure about that background. And then it's as easy as sticking the decal on. And I love this. I love the file. I love how it looks and I can't wait to find a spot to hang it in my craft room. I get asked a lot my opinions on Dollar Tree Crafter Square vinyl. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of it. You can definitely use it, but I think there are other brands out there that are better, but it is an option. Something I do like is this Cricut mat because I lost my other one and the Joy mat is perfect. I'm also always picking up a craft scraper and a picker because those work just as well as the Cricut ones. They're great dupes. And I also love to grab this quick cover because it is a great material to use for stenciling. And I've got another video on that, so check it out in the description. Now what do you do to corral your stuff, especially if you don't have a craft room or a small craft space? Grab one of these shower caddies and then you can go ahead and use the dividers to section off some of your most used vinyl, different tools, mats, and things like that. And you can just easily pick it up and take it out when you're using your Joy or whatever machine, put it back away. This next project is featuring one of my favorite Dollar Tree finds ever, these wood rounds. I make them over all the time, but I have not done an everyday one. So I decided to stain it and I stained an extra one because it was warm enough that day that I wanted to put a stained one in my stash. I put a piece of painter's tape directly across the center and painted it with black chalk paint. Now I'm using this Yay You're Here file to 11 inches wide and I'm showing you how you could potentially put it on if you don't have paper transfer tape. You could use some of this painter's tape, apply it really carefully and try not to have the painter's tape touch the paint. Another tip is to let your paint dry overnight. That helps with any paint chips. You can manually place the apostrophe as well as the dot. And then think of this as regular transfer tape, cut off as much as you can so it doesn't touch the paint. 
and carefully peel it off. So a couple ideas for you if you don't have the paper transfer tape, but I am a huge fan of it. I will recommend it until I'm blue in the face. It just works so well, and it's one of my best sellers as far as what I share to you guys and what you decide to buy. I love this saying so much. It looks so cute on my front door wreath, and I like that it's understated. I didn't want it to be too busy because we do have a red door, but I love it. Now you don't have to put in a ton of work to make some awesome things from Dollar Tree. I think we're showing that throughout the video, but these tags are no exception. I start by cutting off the little jute twine piece that comes with it and staining both of them. They have a ton of different shapes in these tags as well, but they make really cute signs, especially these rectangle ones that will sit up on their own. I decided to cut out my support local makers as well as the dishes can wait files at four inches wide. I used some paper transfer tape to apply them and then I replaced the jute twine one with just some more jute twine to the length that I wanted and then I also added some leopard ribbon to the support local makers. I like how simple these are. The makers one is going to go in my craft room and the dishes can wait life won't is going to go on a tiered tray in my kitchen. I love the message of both and they are so easy to make. Dollar Tree's spring release for some of their blanks is actually pretty good. I just don't get excited about them all that often because, don't hate me, but sometimes they're just cheap and it's easier to spend my money somewhere else for something that's going to last. But I really loved these easel frame looking things and so I decided to just take some super glue, add a clip to the top like we did earlier, and then use this Darlin' Don't Grow Up file, a Taylor Swift song lyric, cut it to four inches wide and apply it to the bottom. I added a fun little picture of Mr. Finn and I on Christmas morning and I absolutely love this. So two different options for photo frames in this video and I love preserving photos. I took this house ceramic ornament looking thing. It's from the crafter square section and I've had it for a while and I decided to use it as a little memento for when we moved into this new house. Now this was another one that was going to be a beast to weed so I decided to put the transfer tape over the top and reverse weed. I tried to use my mat to help hold it down, but it didn't work as well as I imagined. I probably could have just done it on my own, but the reverse weed technique really did help, and I love that we have this as a little memento to remember when we moved into this house. I'll have a similar file without the family so you can update that, as well as without the date so you can add your own. Now I love to grab these Jot little binder folders to save vinyl scraps, but I have outgrown them so I decided to grab some of these regular file folders to make this thing. So I grabbed one of these hanging file plastic containers for like 10 bucks from Target and some hanging files and I used the Dollar Tree folders along with some pieces of scrap vinyl to sort all of my vinyl by color. I labeled the front and the font lemon milk and I love how this turned out. Another Dollar Tree hack, grab one of these little dispensers in the makeup section, fill it with rubbing alcohol, and then all you have to do is take your cotton round, do a little pumping on the top, it will wet it for you, and then you can rub it on whatever you need. So whether you need to clear off glass or clean a surface before you apply vinyl, easy peasy. Speaking of glass, I saw this saying on a mug on an Instagram ad and I knew I had to make it for myself. So I created a file called Swift Tea and if you aren't familiar with Taylor Swift, her fans are called Swifties. I am one of them and I have been taking up drinking tea lately. So I decided to cut out this Swift Tea four inches wide twice so I could do the front and the back of this mug for my nightly tea ritual. And I just used some paper transfer tape because I had it on hand, but you could use whatever transfer tape that you have. And I'm cutting slits in the vinyl as well as the transfer tape to help me kind of apply it around the edge. It's really more of an art, not a science. You kind of just have to do it till it goes without the bubbles. Then I'm using this Arbor Etch to apply over the top of my stencil. And if I have anywhere where it looks a little dicey, you can add some painter's tape so it doesn't get on there. I let it sit for 15 minutes and then I rinsed everything off and removed the vinyl stencil. Then I brought it upstairs, got rid of the bottom sticker and gave it a really good wash with dish detergent. I love etching glass versus putting vinyl on them because this is dishwasher safe. And I also love the understated but punny nature of Swifty. 
Now you guys, it would not be a top Dollar Tree Blanks video here at Whiskey and Wit if I didn't make another shirt. My collection is growing by the video and I absolutely love it. So recently at Dollar Tree, I was able to find a wide variety of t-shirts in my size, which was amazing. And I decided to use this bright highlighter pink one to make a support local makers shirt. So I have a full video on how to screen print. I will send you there because I can walk you through the whole thing over there. I don't have to try to fit it in here. But it is really an easy process once you do it a couple times. You press it, let it dry overnight, and then you press it with some heat. So then that way it is permanently set in there. And I have shirts that I made two springs ago that look brand spanking new. I also created this weekend woodworking coffee and crafting file for my Christmas video as a DIY gift idea. So I will link that in the pack as well if you'd like to check that out. That's gonna do it for this installment of my Cricut Dollar Tree Blanks. If you love this one, be sure to check out my other ones. I will link those down in the description and those have more free cut files as well. And also while you're down in the description, be sure to check out more information about Hungry Root. Remember the first 100 people to use my code WIT40 will get 40% off your first grocery order with Hungry Root. Use the link in the description section or go to HungryRoot.com and use the code WIT40 to get 40% off. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!